all right y'all what's happening once again network ninja back with another video for y'all so i did a poll recently on the community post make sure you're subscribed if you're not subscribed so you don't miss out on anything i'm posting dropping talking about or whatever especially if you're feeling the content so i did a poll basically asking y'all what kind of content you prefer as it relates to ccna stuff computer networking and general network admin and all of this Jordy, y'all said y'all want those step-by-step -step tutorials that is in the process of being made but up second the second most thing that y'all wanted to hear about is some real world case studies so in today's video that's exactly what i'm going to be sharing so hopefully that's something that you want to lock in with and this video i'll be sharing going over a actual real case issue that had to do with a acl where i had to escalate it to my engineer but check me out so this is video is really for anybody that's a beginner or somebody that has no it experience and why i say that is because a lot of questions that i see out there on the interwebs and through youtube and everything is everybody's like hey um what kind of advice do you have for somebody that doesn't have an experience how can you gain experience you want to know how to gain experience go ahead and lock in with this video because i'm going to give you experience just as if i was training you just as if we were working in the knock together and i'm the knock lead right and i've been the knock lead before so this is something that's not new to me this is what i would do for any beginner or somebody that's brand new fresh don't know nothing and they're thrown into the fire right and um so i'm just going to be sharing this as an example and again it's for an acl issue how i handle it what the outcome was all of that kind of stuff so this is pretty much on the job training experience. So if you one of them people that want to put on your resume, that's my goal. By the end of this video, video, I want you to be confident enough to be like, yeah, I have some kind of experience. I have some kind of awareness of ACL troubleshooting, has some kind of training, right? So that's going to be the goal of this video. If that's something that you're interested in, definitely go ahead and lock in with me to the end of the video. All right, to start this off, before just jumping straight into what the issue is and everything like that, I want to give you this kind of expectation right so it's the ccna versus the corporate job or the real world job so this particular incident occurred within my rookie year within my first year of having a ccna or not having a ccna sorry but it was my first year of actually working with cisco equipment so i think it was like six months in and I'm already getting this issue to where I have to escalate to engineer. But even a week into my job, they just threw me straight on bridge calls and everything. I don't know. They were just trying to test my gangster like that. I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is you need to really just get that mindset or get clarity for what, what I mean by CCNA, having a certification versus the real world job. Having that certification, I thought in my head meant that I'm going to be able to handle any kind of Cisco issue coming to me. But this issue humbled me quickly again this is my rookie year so i'm thinking i got a ccna i know about acls right i know they they block incoming outgoing traffic i know all the little textbook stuff a standard you're supposed to configure that as close to the destination as possible and extended you should configure that as close to the source maybe i got that backwards but i knew all the little nuances of the acl or at least i thought i did but as you're going to see with this example that I get, this is the real world. Just because you have a CCNA, don't think that you about to know everything there is to know about Cisco. You're not going to know that. So just get that out. Having a CCNA, it means that you're able to understand stuff like subnetting and everything. But you have to also understand that certification is for mid to large size enterprise businesses. We're talking about when we say mid to large size businesses, we're talking about enterprises that have thousands of routers, if not hundreds of routers that are all configured with these different routing protocols and all of that kind of stuff, different subnets, all different kind of networking concepts are going on. And you're just aware of them at the CCNA level, right? The expert level, they know how to troubleshoot them, work with them, implement them, design them and all of that. But at the CCNA level, it's not going to be that you're just going to jump in and know how to solve every OSPF issue, every BGP issue. No, you're just going to be aware of these concepts that there's routing protocols and what they do. And that's what you need to really lock on. And that's what I want y'all to really understand that 
There's a big difference between having a CCNA and saying I have a CCNA and actually working with actual networking. It's nothing the same. They're two totally different things. So separate that from your mind. There's CCNA, that's good for testing world. That's good for employer. That's good to market yourself so that you become valuable and all of this other stuff. But the real work, you could have a CCNA, but not know not know any kind or have any kind of experience actually configuring or troubleshooting an ACL or anything like that. Because the CCNA says you're just aware of this kind of stuff or network plus, you're just aware of networking concepts actually putting in the work and everything the on the job training that's where it's going to be about and with that being said also this is my rookie year again so you have to understand your first day on the job they're not just gonna say here's a network here figure it out no you get on the job training get it out of your head that once you get a ccna it's like this different world no it's still the real world just like if you worked at McDonald's, you're not going to know how to make the McDonald's burger or whatever the case may be. I'm using that as an example. Or if you go to work at Walmart or whatever, somebody got to train you. The same thing has got to happen when you get a CCNA and you work in a knock. Somebody is going to have to train you. Hopefully you run into somebody like me that put you on, but ain't no hater and put you on all the game. But you may run into somebody that's difficult and not going to put you on. But the key to understand is that you will get the on the job training nobody's just going to expect you oh you have a ccna oh oh everything there is to know about subnetting and all of this and you never even designed a network that took me a little bit of time to like try to figure out now i think that's where a lot of that imposter syndrome and all of that kind of stuff comes into play but just again my main point with all of this i know i went on for a little bit but just remember Reality and CCNA, two totally different things for two totally different purposes, but they still, they need one another for you to be a successful network admin slash network engineer. All right, so here is part of the email. Hopefully y'all can see that. It's a lot of writing. Listen, I was a rookie when I was doing this, but hopefully y'all can see all of that. But this is an email escalation that I did for ACL issue. It's a lot. So let me go ahead and read it just in case y'all can't see that. Hopefully my head ain't in the way and all that. But basically, I was just saying they had a self-serve copier. I gathered the IP address. It's not communicating with a server, blah, blah, blah. This is the server IP address, right? The end user would like for us to investigate if the ACL statements are allowing devices connected to VLAN 220 to com communicate via port 3750. So we could stop right there. So that's the kind of thing that you're going to get as a CCNA. What they say, the end user would like for us to investigate if the ACL statements are allowing devices connected to VLAN 220 to communicate via port 3750 lost in the sauce immediately even reading this right now this thing was like seven years ago and people i've been doing this for 10 years and even that statement right there shakes me i don't even know where to deal with it but again i do know to break things down into manageable chunks i did learn some stuff so this is they, they talking about vlan 220 i have no idea how to even check that kind of stuff so let's move on all i said was so far we logged into the router and this is my escalation to the engineering team. We logged into the router and pulled some info and I posted it below. To my understanding, the ACL statement configures permitting any source IP address, blah. I basically said that I see an ACL permitting this source IP address for the copier and it's using port 3750. And then I also put in there, hey, I'm sorry if my approach was not the best steps to take to get a quick resolution. Please let me know the proper resolution steps the engineering team takes this is the finesse this is me trying to get the information out of them so please go ahead and share what what resolution steps y'all take that way i could build my little knowledge base also if there is a problem with an acl and they want me to see if vlan 220 is communicating over a certain port boom i have an example a perfect real world case study that i could use and again, this is how you would use this. So again, if you were working here, I would tell you, hey, make sure you get IP address information. I will also say, hey, I'm not the best. That's why I'm putting in here. Hey, can you guys advise on any and all resolution steps so that 
next time I can handle this so that you guys can focus on more complex issues. And then of course I showed my work. You wanna always prove and show your work. So then it was like show IP access list. This is how I found that access list statement. So that's where I left it off. That was my response. So now let's go ahead and look at the engineer's response to I guess my escalation I meant. So he's saying you have to look at the specific interface the ACLs are applied to. In this case, we are looking at VLAN 220. So show run interface, and you see, and these two named ACLs, DPS in and out, are applied to the interface. This is the first place you wanna to look to see if it's allowed. Again, I don't remember this issue exactly, but he did give me some information here. We need to look at the ACLs, at the what, what interface they're configured on. We need to see what interface they're configured on. He found what interface they're configured on. And then he just went to see if it's allowed from there. So here he says all TCP is allowed from 1095.89 network to VLAN 220. This is good. So he did it again for the other ACL, which is DPSN. And he looked here and he said, there's no statement that allows VLAN 220 to talk back to the 1095.89 network on TCP 3750. So he found out that there was two ACLs that were configured on this interface that was allowed on traffic in and out from these two networks. But there was traffic for it to go out, but not traffic for it to come in. He added the following access list and he asked me to have the site test. I just took a note through this in my OneNote and then the site tested, I'm pretty sure everything came out. They verified everything was flowing. Why didn't it have a, a statement in there? It could have got misconfigured. Anything could have happened. Maybe somebody, it's an ACL, maybe they put in the wrong sequence number and it bumped it out. For whatever reason, that ACL statement was deleted and the fix was to add it back. So that's just a look at the email escalation. It ain't too much more after the email escalation. Again, once I got it to the engineer, gave them the information, all of that kind of stuff. They were able to look at that, respond to me, and then that's the email. That's kind of what it looks like. And that's kind of what that email escalation process is gonna look like, at least from when I was working in a knock for an MSP. All right, that wraps it up for this one. Again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it provided some kind of insight, gave you some kind of value and made you a little bit more confident you really did receive some kind of on the job training because remember i really just want to drive this point home that the ccna and your real world job are going to be two totally separate things uh, don't mix them up together it's definitely a big difference between the two and also remember with that being said your is a real world job you're going to get that on the job training nobody is just going to be like oh you have a certification Here's a whole large enterprise network. Here's no topologies, no IP address information, and there's no knowledge of how anything works, but you have a CCNA, so I'm sure you could figure it out, right? So no, don't let nobody fool you. It's still on the job training. Somebody's got to train you up, and then after you get trained, it's going to be up for you to put together that kind of documentation for yourself, and then that way you can start to spot out those opportunities where you can develop process, which are, is just gonna make you that much more valuable and that much more successful in your career. If you were feeling today's video, definitely help me out please with those likes. Let me see those thumbs up. If you learned anything, definitely subscribe. If I provided some kind of value to you, it's just gonna help me out with creating more content. You already know how it goes and producing that kind of content that you guys wanna see. Again, I appreciate each and everybody for tapping in with me. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss next week's video and that's where I'll catch y'all on next week's video. Holla at me. Peace.